workforce come from for cities? And what were some of the things that were going on in, in cities that, that attracted this workforce? Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. All right, great. Great, then. Looking particularly um, uh, for the thumbs up sign from those of you at, at, the, at the very back. Well, one way of thinking about this is just some of the ways in which uh, families provide for themselves. And uh, there, there are some that are common today and some that were common uh, previously. Uh, for example, today we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of families that sustain themselves through commerce, through the distribution and selling of manufactured products uh, or of agricultural products. So you may sell shoes, you may sell, uh, you may sell uh, bananas. Uh, there are others who sustain themselves and their families through industrial wage employment, working in factories, working in, in, in manufacturing. There are others who sustain themselves through services uh, to homes or to businesses, accountants, lawyers, etc. Those are, are three that existed previously and that still exist very strongly uh, today. There are others that we don't see quite as much of today, uh, although, they, although they still exist. Uh, there are craftspeople, for example. Um, there are people who, uh, who do wage-based farming, who work for wages for, uh, for farms throughout the United States. And there are others uh, who provide for themselves uh, through the farming that they do for their, their families. Those are, uh, those are what we uh, would call people who are engaged in sustenance farming. Well, back in the 19th century, these last three ways of providing for self and family were much more common than they are today. And during the 19th century, we saw this uh, a huge move uh, from crafts and from sustenance farming and from wage-based farming into the expansion of industry and commerce and the, and the rise of wage labor. This was part of, of a much larger trend that was happening uh, throughout the Western world uh, that had actually begun uh, in the 1500s and 1600s uh, that accelerated with the Industrial Revolution uh, beginning in, in Europe in the, uh, in the 1700s, and that accelerated in the United States uh, after, um, after the, the, the turn of, of the century in, in the 1800s as, as more and more of the United States became industrialized. So um, we, we see this move from, uh, from sustenance farming, from wage-based farming, from production of, of crafts on a, on a small scale into an industrial manufacture and into commerce for those goods that are being produced and for the agricultural products that now increasingly are not being produced by small farms and individual farmers, but are being produced by larger and larger farms. Uh, <clears throat> I'll talk about that in, in just a second. So uh, cities were sites for the industry and commerce and sites for wage labor. So what would lead someone to make a move from farming into this new wage labor in cities? Well, there were a number of important things, and we talk about some of them uh, in, this, uh, in this chart here. I'll, I'll group some things on in general, say a few things that aren't on this, on this chart. One of, the, uh, one of the important things was that agricultural life was uh, was really subject to the vagaries of, of weather. So drought was an important factor. Just to give you one example close to home, in 1860, 1816, uh, in Vermont, during one summer, there were 120 days without rain. 120 days without rain in Vermont. And, and you know that Vermont is still a state with a whole lot of agriculture. It was even more so in those days um, at, during, uh, during that summer, uh, basically it lasted from, uh, from, from June through October, in which there was, was no rain. Uh, there were, the, the crops in Vermont were basically destroyed. And you can imagine uh, the situation that families in Vermont were, were left with. Uh, bankruptcy for individuals, poverty for individuals because they could not sell their, their produce mortgage foreclosures on the, on the land, yes, there were mortgage foreclosures even back then. Um, and the consideration of many people in Vermont, well, perhaps I should move to Boston, or perhaps I should move to, uh, to Providence, or one of the other 
uh, one of the other cities. Another big problem uh, was, was floods, uh, not so much in, in Vermont, but, uh, but in other places. We know about the flood of New Orleans that happened just a few years ago. Well, floods have happened before, uh, going back um, uh, to uh, going back in the early part of the 20th century, uh, you may have heard about the Mississippi flood of 1927, uh, which which flooded 27,000 square miles. You may uh, you may have heard uh, perhaps of the flood of 1903 in the Missouri Basin, which left 14 percent of Kansas underwater. Now you can imagine what happens to agricultural produce, and, and the Missouri Basin was agricultural land. Uh, there were many, uh, many very rich farms in terms of their production uh, in Missouri and in Kansas that were totally flooded out by this time. And you can imagine what happened to the families there and the types of choices. Uh, pestilence, um, a disease, bacterial or, or fungi, uh, and insects were also something that affected farms. And then we had, I said I would mention this again, the, uh, as, as the 19th century moved on, we had the growth of agribusiness, the growth of, of larger, uh, larger firms that were doing farming uh, at cheaper prices uh, who were able to use various forms of technology to, uh, to lower their cost. And so we had a number of, of families that were displaced, that found, it, uh, that found themselves unable to compete, that found themselves uh, just unable to continue farming as they, as they had known it. So these were what we call uh, push factors. They're factors that lead someone to move away from where they are. Now the question is, where do you move to? And there we get to some of the pull factors uh, that affecting migration in, in cities. Now, one of the things about cities at this time, as wage labor increased, as, as industrial production uh, increased, uh, there was a shortage of workers. And this is what attracted uh, many people who were leaving other places. There was a great variety of jobs. There was lots of unskilled, um, uh, there was lots of unskilled work that was available in, in cities. So the people from farming areas could move right in and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and find work. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, so for example, between 1860 and 1910, virtually every city in the United States rebuilt its infrastructure, building new roads, building uh, water systems, building sewer systems, most of that done with unskilled labor. And so people moving from other countries, people moving from, uh, from rural areas, uh, often found themselves engaged in, in this work. Uh, but there were also, uh, but there were also uh, other things that pulled people to cities. There were more people in cities, and so there are more chances of running into a useful circumstance just through who you happen to, uh, to, to get to know. There was a potential for social mobility that might not exist on farms so that you could move up the, move up the social ladder. Um, there was a possibility of making money that you could send back home uh, to the farm, uh, that, that you could uh, provide more variation in, to, in terms of the types of work that your, that your family was doing uh, overall and help to steady the situation uh, on farms. And, um, and, and today, we still have people who are moving uh, to cities and sending remittances uh, back home. So we had this tremendous growth, and one, one indication of, of this and the type of work that was, that was available, or, or two indications of this. We have, uh, we, we mentioned um, this, the growth of cities in the, in, the last, um, in the last slide. Imagine, in 1830, Chicago did not exist. In 1830, Chicago did not exist. And by 1910, it was one of the largest cities in the world. Now, this, is, this was um, the, the result of, of poll. Uh, some of you may have seen uh, the film Going to Chicago, which although is, is based upon 20th century migration, uh, says some very interesting things that were true in the 19th century also. People could go into a place like Chicago and find work on the first day, walk down the street the first day and see sign after sign saying, uh, uh, saying help one. 
So for all of these reasons, uh, cities were, uh, were very attractive uh, to people from rural areas uh, who, uh, who often uh, found the, the farm life and, and the farm situations uh, being both economically and socially um, rather unpredictable and believing that, uh, believing that their futures in cities might be more bright. 